but Team Coin needs to check out utcoinsforyou.com. There will be a link in the description, and if you use the code Ches, you can get yourself a 5% discount. Hey guys, how's it going? Ches back again with another episode of the World Cup Squad Series here on my channel and of course on the Random FIFA Videos community channel as well. So as always, if you're watching over there on the community channel, feel free to check the link in the description to come check my channel out if you'd like to see more from me. But basically, the gist of this series, if you're new to it, is we build a team from a specific nation that qualified for the World Cup for Brazil 2014. We go through uh, their in-depth World Cup history. Now, it's not too much about the team that I've built. In fact, the team that I build each video may not even be... Uh, a full team that's actually going to go to the World Cup this summer. It's just a, a full 11 of nationals from that specific nation. Perhaps a couple of informs thrown in there as well if there are any at our uh, disposal. A couple of quick questions or quick questions, quick points about the team. Now there is transferred uh, Lucina Traore in there at Everton. Have to be honest, his card is absolutely horrible. Do not buy that man. Uh, inform Jovino and inform first inform Kalu, even though there is a second inform striker card in there. And I've got Didier Drogba of course as at Cam and then as you may expect, Yaya Torre holding, but uh, both co both Colos, both Tories are in there as well. Colo is in the defence, but let's get cracking with uh, with Ivory Coast World Cup history, shall we? So, uh, as with last week, though, unfortunately, when uh, when we cover Greece, the Ivory Coast don't actually have that long and uh, an illustrious tradition with the World Cup tournament. Between 1930 and 1970, they didn't enter at all, and uh, from 1974 to 2002. They didn't qualify at all. They never got out of the uh, out of the qualification process. So their first appearance at a World Cup finals came in Germany 2006. But uh, just aside from football, it was actually a massive, massive time for uh, for the nation as a whole. Not only for the sporting reasons, but uh, it brought a temporary peace and ceasefire in the civil war that had been absolutely ravaging the country. And it actually persuaded the uh, the president to restart peace talks. So it was absolutely massive for uh, for the nation of the Ivory Coast to uh, to qualify for Germany 2006. Sadly though all the positivity from uh, you know from outside the the actual footballing tournament couldn't transpire into their performances on the pitch and they weren't able to get past the group stage of the tournament. It was an extremely tough group in all fairness and uh, they lost 2-1 to Argentina and then lost 2-1 to the Netherlands. So as you may expect that is an extremely tough group. They were actually though able to pick up their debut points with a 3-2 win over Serbia and Montenegro. Uh, in their uh, in their final group game, of course, since then Serbia and Montenegro have uh, since uh, quote unquote split up and become independent nations of their own right. So uh, that's why it's Serbia and Montenegro in 2006. And then at South Africa 2010, they qualified for back-to-back -back tournaments, and uh, again they were put in a very very difficult group after doing tremendously well to hold Portugal to a nil-nil draw in the opening game. They unfortunately lost 3-1 to Brazil before again winning their final game of the uh, of the group stage. This time 3-0 over North Korea. But again, it was a not quite enough for them to uh, to get out of the group stage. So unfortunately, both of their appearances so far in the tournament have resulted in early exits. Although this time around, they are in a better group. They, uh, of course, have Greece in the group, the team that we covered last week. The other two teams in Group C are Japan and Colombia. So Ivory Coast to a strong side. They definitely do stand a chance of getting out of the group stage this time. And as a prediction, I'd say they're probably going to come second in the group behind Colombia. Although Japan are a very, very strong side. You would expect Greece to be the weaker side of the group. But again, it's such an unpredictable group and unpredictable tournament that you, uh, you just can't say either way whether they're definitely going to get through or definitely not going to get through but uh, that's basically I think if they perform well they will do that's my personal uh, interpretation of how they're going to do in the in the summer if you have any different opinions then feel free to let me know in the comment section down below a couple of random miscellaneous facts before we finish their uh, current FIFA ranking is 17 as I record this at uh, the beginning of February 2014 and their highest ever FIFA world ranking is 12th which they had early 2013 uh, the most caps held by uh, an Ivory Coast national is Didier Zucora with 118 and as you might expect the top goal scorer is in fact Didier Drogba with 62 goals so that's going to bring this particular episode to a close guys do apologize again that it's a little bit short just like the Greece one but uh, like I say I can't really uh, dictate how well countries have done previously in their World Cup experiences so that's going to bring this one to a close if you did enjoy feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind that'd be absolutely superb if you aren't subscribed to the channel already then feel free to do so there will be a link in the description and uh, that's going to bring this one to a close thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you next time